Just when you think you've seen the end of her, Katie Griffith comes back. Looking like a golem from Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry, I can't help it. But guys, at the end of the day, yes. Oh, by the way, that's on my Twitter if you want to repost it. But yes, at the end of the day, she is back looking... Dysfunctional? Psychotic? Insane? But let's have a look at this video because I think it speaks volumes for itself. And you let me know at the end of it, do you think Kathy Griffith is insane? Or do you think she's just playing a role? Hey buddy, it's me, Kathy Griffin. And I'm doing um, what I call a State of the Union YouTube video. So for anybody that does not know, the State of the Union Address is an annual speech presented by the President of the United States to a joint session of the United States Congress. I'm sorry, who are you again? Oh, that's right, you're a D-list actor who people particularly don't like at the moment. How are you giving a State of the Union Address? Which is what I'm presuming you're talking about here. You're not the President of the United States. I'm sorry, get over your fucking self. So, I hope you watch this on YouTube. It'll probably be like about five minutes. Um, what's the date? No, Saturday, November 18th. It's Saturday, November 18th, 2017. I kind of lose track because I'm on a world tour. Now, this sort of attitude will actually pop up from time to time. Actually, quite, quite frequent, actually. It's this sort of, look at me, I'm fabulous attitude that she seems to have. You haven't realized that you're almost completely irrelevant by this point in time. You can't even book a, a gig in your home country as a comedian and you've been in the industry for how many years? I am sorry, please get over yourself, okay? You are not fabulous, you're not a superstar, and you really need to lose that big ego that you seem to have got over the past few years. All right, so what I want to address today is I'm getting a lot of online hate from trolls who think I've lost my mind. And um, I'm admitting... I lost my mind. It's what made me a star in the first place. Okay, in this context, when people say you've lost your mind, they're not talking about you being a little wacky or crazy. They're talking about you being full-blown, Trump-deranged, psychotic, insane, which every time we get you start talking about Trump, you fly off in this huge-ass tangent where you go on about blaming him for everything. I will be very surprised if this whole video, you do not blame Trump at least three times for something. You, you are, you're no longer beyond the point of, oh, Kathy's a little crazy, that's funny. It, we're going into the territory where Kathy is fully deranged, suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Please, someone, get this girl some fucking straight jackets, get her a white padded room, because she is way out on left field, playing with yourself, going, Wee, look at me, I'm passing the ball to myself. But I just want to be honest, like, as far as what we're going through and hoping this is a turning point for feminism and women's equality, <clears throat> pardon me, I just want you to know that at 57, for me, it's not a marathon. It's a sprint. So I don't have a lot of time to be patient and, you know, I read today that my pal Lena Dunham is sticking up for some male writer that was accused of sexual harassment. I'm going to touch on the Lena Dunham thing later in this video because she talks about it soon. But at the end of the day, you just tell by her attitude in this whole video that it's all me, 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 look at me, look how great, terrific I am, wee, look at me. Like, even, you know, she's talking about how she's getting older and... It's a sprint, you know? Like, I don't have a lot of time left. Who gives a shit? What have you got to do with women all around the world suffering from equality? <coughs> By the way, I got the joke, yes. But at the end of the day, it's funny because you won't see Katie Griffith going after Saudi Arabia or some third world country. Why is it that feminists only deal with their country? They don't deal with other countries where they're actually needed. I have no idea. And her female partner, Jenny Connor, who Judd Apatow handpicked for her, and nobody's ever handpicked anybody for me. More me, 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 look at me again. You know, oh, I'm so hard done by, oh, where's my victim card? Quick, someone need some more victim points. You know, I don't know the details, but my first instinct is, girl, that's not helping the movement. And it's a movement. And the sun is coming out of the clouds as I say that. So 
you know, don't be too hard on Lena. Don't be too hard on me. Um, and I just want you guys to know I'm fully in the middle of a blacklist. Like I am in the middle of a Hollywood blacklist. It is real. I am not booked on any talk shows. And I wonder why that is. Maybe when you hold up a severed head of the President of the United States of America that just under half the population voted for, people seem to be missing that point, just under half of the population of America wanted Trump over Hillary as their president. And here you are holding up a severed head, ISIS style, and you wonder why you're not booked on any talk shows. Gee, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm selling tickets worldwide, which is really hard when you don't have any kind of a television platform and kind of nobody has your back and everyone thinks you're crazy. No, honey, people don't think you're crazy. People think you are a deranged. There's the difference. Crazy, crazy is funny. Crazy is interesting. Crazy, you can sell tickets to a show. Deranged? Deranged people don't necessarily want to hear or say what you have to say. But a handful of people think I'm kind of on to something. So I just want you guys to know, when I get home, I do not have one single day of paid work in front of me. This just comes across as begging for work. It's just, guys, please look, employ me, get me a gig, do something. I don't have any paid work. It, it just seems like you're begging for work, that's all. And people that want me to go back and start in clubs and do 10 minutes again, I don't mean to be an asshole, but no, I'm not going to do that. I've worked way too hard to go back and work for free and do the club scene again because this is some bullshit because I've been blacklisted. Translation, that basically means that that stuff that she just mentioned, the 10 minutes in clubs, the, the free work and all that is beneath her. That's what she really means by that. That's what she's saying is that she actually says it later that that she's above all that like please the ego please someone get rid of the ego so i actually got another fundraising email from the great norman lear and i just had to write back and go yeah none of you can ask me for money anymore okay my legal bills are through the roof obviously because I'm doing something I really believe in. And I still say the end goal is for younger women and younger LGBT folks or disenfranchised people of any kind can watch me survive and with a sense of humor. So. I don't know what sort of work they were or that, that email. I haven't seen the email exchange, so I don't know what they're asking. But if I'm struggling to find work and someone says to me, for example, would you like to come to my charity event and perform for free for a charity? It'd be good PR, you know, get your name back out there. I'll be like, shit, I'll do it. Why not? But then I don't have the ego the size of the good year blip, do I? So, you know, there's that. I just want to say, like, I have a show tonight in Vienna. I never thought I'd be able to play Vienna. Um, every single country I've played, I can't believe that there are hundreds, if not thousands of people that don't even speak English as their first language, as if I do. That's my opener. Um, and I'm very heartened by that. So, uh... Yeah, these countries where you sold tickets and everything like that, they're not the America. They're not your home base. They're not people that will be offended by you holding up a severed head. Well, not as offended anyway. Like I said, half of the population voted for Trump, or just under half. At the end of the day, in Vienna, chances are very few people, if any, care about Trump. So at the end of the day, holding up a severed head of him, while they might think, yeah, it's wrong, they're not going to be as offended. That's why you're selling tickets over there. That's why you can't sell tickets in America. It's not rocket science. Um, there is hope out there. Uh, there's a lot of forces coming against people like me that are trying to do something. I mean, look at Harvey Weinstein hired Kroll. By the way, Nick Kroll's dad started that company, Nick, so he doesn't have to worry about money. And some company called Black Cube to like follow Rose McGowan. So, you know, I'm kind of assuming I'm next. I'm already on the Interpol list and all this other stuff, so. No, honey, you're on the Interpol list because you held up a severed head of the President of the United States. Let's not go mixing those two things together. 
Yes, Weinstein is an ass. But guess what? Being in show business, it is completely feasible that you knew about that as well. Apparently, this whole Weinstein thing wasn't that much of a secret. Apparently, a lot of people knew what he was up to. And not a lot of people came forward until they had very successful careers. I don't want anybody else to have to go through this. So, watch me do it, hopefully with aplomb and a sense of humor. And I'm on stage tonight at 8.30. I cannot wait to do my show. I only have seven more shows left on this tour, and I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be hard when I go home and I don't have one show in my future. No, you do have shows in your future. You just don't want to take them because they're beneath you. There's the difference. And at the end of the day, you're not having any shows when you go back to the US because you don't want to take them. You don't want, you don't have the jobs that you want. Whose fault's that? Who held up the severed head? You know, this is all victim, victim. Look at me, victim points, victim points. Can I cash it in and get a free holiday? It's bullshit. This is why I hate identity politics. So, no, I don't do... I know I'm being an asshole, but no, I don't want to do free shows. I don't want to do someone's 50 person club. I did that for decades. I think I should be able to get my life back. So I know I took a picture that offended a lot of people, but this wall of crap has never fallen on any woman in the history of America like it has on me. Probably because people haven't done anything as stupid as what you did by holding up a severed head. ISIS style. Like, oh my god, how are you not, how are you this thick, really? How, how do you not get that this was horrendously offensive, horrendously in bad taste, and completely insane to do? So, and by the way, I know about Eartha Kitt, and I very much encourage you to look her up. But even Eartha Kitt didn't have, like, Fox News. For anybody that's interested, Eartha Kitt is actually was an American singer, actress, dancer, and activist comedian known for her highly distinctive style in the 1953 recordings of C.S. Bilbon. Um, but she is more well known for her activism. Or activism. Uh, now, Kitt was uh, active in numerous social causes in the 1950s and 60s. In 1966, she established the Kittsville Youth Foundation a charitable non-profit organization for underprivileged youth in the Watts area of Los Angeles. She was also involved with groups of youths in the area of Acosta and Washington, D.C. who called themselves Rebel with a Cause. Kit supported the group's effort to clean up the streets and establish recreation areas in effort to keep them out of trouble by testifying with them before the House General Subcommittee. Like, to be honest, this woman is a hero. She has done amazing work within activism. She literally got kids off the street. She helped underprivileged children. What did you do, Kathy? You held up a severed head of the president, you know. <laughs> Although, by the way, I'm bowing down to Eartha Kitt and anyone else who's ever been blacklisted. So just, you guys, just try to have some compassion. I'm just trying to bring laughter to people. That's all I want to do. I wish I was on television. I have two Emmys, which apparently doesn't mean anything. I'm sorry, having Emmys does not guarantee you shows. For example, me, having a YouTube video. If I have a YouTube video that goes absolutely viral, that doesn't necessarily mean that all my videos are going to go viral. The end of the day, you're as good as your last show, for example. So at the end of the day, lose the ego. Please, for the love of God, lose the friggin' ego. Um, the Hollywood Reporter did a really cool cover about, like, not shutting women up. And that same publication disinvited me from hosting or doing the opening remarks of their famous annual breakfast. So, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting bullshit from all sides here. That should probably tell you how shit this stunt was. If you're copying flack from both the left and the right... That should tell you how fucked up it was to pull this stunt. And it probably should make you think, ah, oh, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I should apologize. But what did you do? You apologized and then walked it back. Self-inflicted gunshot wound, people. But I still am so excited to hit the stage tonight. And I would love to be on a television show. And I want to be paid what the guys are paid. So that's where I'm coming from. 
All right, so I hope you'll have some faith. I know my social media is getting a little crazy. To be honest, the social media is just me, 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 look at me, like she went on about the room that she had in what looks like Vienna, and she's going on about how she thinks Trump selected it for her. Uh, how do you tell you about Vienna? There's a lot of rooms like that, sweetie. It's Vienna. It's literally a floating island. You do get that, right? But Trump, Trump has no real say in Vienna. You do realize that, right? The derangement syndrome, people. But why not? And you know my new title, the mayor of Zero Fucksville, Zero. Hope you've enjoyed. Well, thank God that's over. Oh, I need to go and have a drink. Okay, guys, look, obviously this one wasn't so bad as to some of them, but the reason why I wanted to go through this video was mainly because of the fact that, that it is the self-entitlement. It is insane. This is the liberal, air quote, elites, and this is a D-list celebrity. Imagine what Weinstein and whatnot are like. Guys, I've, obviously at the end of the day, look, I, I, I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you think she's just bonkers? Do you think she's nuts? Do you think she's deranged? Do you think she's suffering from Trump derangement syndrome? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack a like. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. And apart from that, guys, I'll see you in the next demonetized video from YouTube. Have a great day and enjoy.